guys, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited for today's video. It is a Q&A. I do currently have Little Miss here with me. She is eight weeks old and she's having some booby. So if I get a little distracted or you hear noises, it's just Amelia. So the first question says, how did you know that you and Clinton were ready to start a family? I don't think there was really like a moment in time where we were like, yep, we're ready now. We're at that point in our lives where if it happens, it happens kind of thing. For me, I didn't want to be a mum for quite a long time because I do have a big family. I am the eldest and I kind of just didn't want the responsibility. But after having my niece in my life, it just fully changed my outlook on kids again like watching her grow and learn has just been the most special thing and it really made me go like okay like I think I do want to be a mum one day so yeah we'd obviously discussed it I decided to come off the pill I was working with a naturopath to make sure my cycle was fine and we just thought let's go for it <laughs> next question says what preparation did you do that didn't work out if there was any I feel like the prep that we did it was all quite helpful we did a hypnobirthing course with that we took what we wanted like we didn't take everything to be like 100% gospel and that's what we're gonna do we took bits that we thought would be helpful to us so I feel like all the preparation we did like it all come in handy next question says what was your labor like is it as painful as everyone says yeah <laughs> it hurts so I did just upload my birth story. If you haven't seen it, I will link it down below. But I end up having a water birth, drug free, which is what I wanted. I cannot believe that I was able to do that. Like my body did that, blows my mind. But I don't even know how to explain the pain. It's just so much pressure, just tight pressure. Like all your insides are about to come out. <laughs> That kind of leads on to this question about how did you manage contractions? I want to avoid an epidural, but literally how? Yeah, it is a mind game. Like I said in my birth story, I was only a few hours into contractions and my mind was already telling me, you cannot do this. It is a battle in your head. Like you have to completely trust your body and just give in, like give in to the sensations. If Clinton wasn't there telling me I can do it, I don't know if I would have been strong enough. It was hard, but I did do a lot of prep beforehand, like the hypnobirthing course. I listened to meditations. I wrote out affirmations. I feel like I, you know, really put in the work to trust my body and my baby and believe that they know what to do i just have to go with it but i know hypnobirthing courses are expensive but if you can afford it i would highly recommend it um, otherwise i'm sure you can just go online and find some information but it's definitely worth putting in the work even at the start of the hypnobirthing course like the first thing we did was describing what a positive birth means to us and to you a positive birth may mean an epidural or a c-section so I think if you really want to avoid an epidural, write down what a positive birth is to you, um, how you want to feel, what does that mean, what does that look like, and kind of go from there. Next question says, please talk a bit more about water delivery. So the hospital I went to, I actually had to sign a consent form beforehand. My pregnancy had to be low risk. I had to be under a certain weight. There were quite a few rules for a water birth. When I was there, like I got in the tub, they did have to set the water to a certain temperature. I wanted it hotter, but <laughs> they wouldn't let me. I never really thought much about a water birth until we did hypnobirthing. But what really drew me to it was the fact that people wouldn't be in my space. I would have, you know, the area, or like a little bit of an area to myself, like the midwives couldn't be all up in my grills, poking and prodding me when I didn't want to be. Yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. I'm glad I could do it. The water definitely helps. Like it doesn't obviously relieve all the pain, but it definitely helps. And it, it just feels nice to be in there and birth your baby in the water. 
It's just amazing. I loved it. If I were to have another baby, I would definitely try for another water birth. The next question says, what was the best piece of advice you were given to get through labor? I don't really know if it was advice, but one of my favorite affirmations was, I trust my body. I trust my baby. That really helped me. Like Clinton was telling me that. I was saying it over and over in my head. I had it pinned up on my wall when I was pregnant. If you are wanting to have a physiological birth, I think that is something to remember and you just need to like drill into your head <laughs> and repeat it, that you trust your body and you trust your baby because you don't have control over this situation. And that is something that was quite hard for me. So I really had to let go of that control and put my trust into my body because it was the only way like whatever my body decided it was going to do whatever my baby decided like how she was going to come out i just had to trust my body that that was the right way to go next question is what were the most useful things to have with you during this time as in any must-haves for your hospital bag i feel like packing a hospital bag is such a big deal like there's so many videos and like information online i feel like the main things we used were i've got like a night light that's for her that plays white noise and has different light settings on it we use that because we turned all the lights off in the bathroom and then just had like a dim light and a meditation or music and then for pain relief i used a tens machine and also a comb and then i also had an eye mask to keep everything dark and keep me in the zone so i think those things were extremely helpful and then i feel like for yourself afterwards adult diapers you said <laughs> that's all you really need i got a few questions about the expectation versus the reality of birth i feel like it was pretty in line with what i expected especially because my birth went how i ideally wanted it the feeling of a contraction i just don't think you can explain or like you just don't know what to expect it's like nothing i've ever experienced before i think i was expecting to be more calm i don't know just watching a lot of these hypnobirthing videos a lot of women were really calm barely made a noise breathed their way through it and here i am moaning and groaning and making loud noises and finding it really difficult to stay calm and i was like well how come these women in these videos can do it what am i doing that's so different kind of thing so i think i was expecting to be more calm than what i was at the end of the day it doesn't really matter I still had a great birth and am happy with how I managed the pain of a contraction, so whatever. I also didn't expect my mind to kind of give up on me so easily. Like when I was contracting in the lounge room, my mind was already telling me I couldn't do this and I was only like four hours in. I really wasn't expecting that. I thought I was going to be way stronger for way longer. <laughs> But I guess that's why you need a great support system and that's where Clinton come in and really just encouraged me and helped me battle those negative thoughts. The next question is, how long was your labor and how is everything going for you? So my waters broke at 5.30 in the afternoon and I gave birth at 2.50 like the next morning. What's that, nine to 10 hours? It really wasn't that long. I was expecting a way longer labor, especially for a first baby. Again, this is where I think hypnobirthing may have helped. Who knows, like your body does what it does, but I think being able to stay calm, stay at home for as long as possible, um, having great support, I think all of that really helped my labor progress. A few questions about what the support has been like from the healthcare system now that a baby girl is here. They, were good, like I found them really good. They come out to the house, like a midwife come out to the house, I think the next day or maybe on day two. And then another two days later, another midwife come out and they like weighed her, checked her, checked me. So I thought that was really great. I would have liked them to keep coming like once a week for a good couple of weeks, but unfortunately that doesn't happen. They discharge her from the hospital after those two checks. But there is also a lot of support from, I think they're called like the, healthcare nurses it's like government funded but you can go there and get free support i went and did that and i had another midwife come out to the house and just go over a bunch of things with me she was here for like an hour and a half two hours and that was really helpful 
Um, I even reached out to another midwife who bulk bills. We did a FaceTime and again just went over some things with her. So I do feel like there is a lot of free support out there. I did end up seeing a lactation consultant. I did have to pay for that and it was quite expensive. It was $170 for the consultation, but it did help me a lot. I rang the hospital to ask if I could see a lactation consultant there, um, but they said like it was too late. And she was only five weeks at the time. They were like, oh, we only see you up until like two weeks. Midwives can help you with that as well. Like the midwives that come out, they all helped me with breastfeeding, but I just still felt like something wasn't right. That's why I went and saw a lactation consultant. The next question is, now that you have given birth, what would you have liked to have known prior to birth that you know now? Oh my goodness, just how overwhelming it is. I had a really positive birth and it was still so overwhelming and just so much to process. So if you had a birth that you know, didn't quite go how you expected, or there was emergencies. I can't even imagine how stressful and 10 times more overwhelming that is. I did talk a little bit about this on Instagram recently, like all the things I would have liked to have known or like just been told about, but I feel like you just have to experience it. Even if I was told all these things, would it have really made a difference? Because every baby's different. You know, everyone responds differently, everyone's birth is different, everyone's support is different. But I do feel like it is really overwhelming and I don't really know how you can even prepare for that. A lot of people like post on Instagram, <laughs> as I was saying, a lot of people post on Instagram saying like they're in this little love bubble and blah blah blah. And I'm like, yeah, I love my husband, I love my baby, but there is just so much adrenaline running through your body, so much unknown so much to process, like it's not all cutesy and like sweet as people make it, like make it out to be, you know? It is, it is rough. And then the baby blues, people talk about baby blues all the time, but doesn't baby blues kind of sound, oh that's cute, oh baby blues. Oh my God, the roller coaster of emotions, holy hell, I cried every day for two to three weeks, I think. Some days they were happy tears, some days they were tears from how hard it is. One day I cried because I missed my belly. <laughs> it is just full on and I guess I wasn't prepared for the baby blues either. So I think maybe just knowing a bit more about like the realistic side of it and it does like sound negative and I don't mean to come across like for it to come across negatively, but in reality, it's, it's hard work. And then the last question for today, because little miss is getting a bit fussy, <laughs> is what has been the most challenging part about becoming a mum? Again, it's probably gonna sound negative and I'm sorry, but all of it, <laughs> it has been hard and a big adjustment. And people say it's hard and you go, yeah, like, okay, becoming a new parent is hard but they don't really explain what is so hard about it. For me, I found obviously being sleep deprived hard. And again, people say you're gonna be sleep deprived, but I've never experienced that before. I don't know what that's like. So going through that is just like so full on. The baby blues and that roller coaster of emotions is difficult. Adjusting to your new routines and just new daily life, I think, has been quite challenging. Obviously I knew my day would revolve around my baby, but I thought, you know, I'd still maybe get like an hour to myself and I just don't. And so that's kind of hard to come to terms with because everything that you're used to is just gone out the window. Like, you know, I get upset quite often at the fact that Clinton and I can't just like sit down, eat dinner and watch TV together anymore. You know, it's a struggle to even cook the dinner and eat it, let alone try and do it at the same time because one of us has the baby. Like, I feel like things have already started to get better now that she's older. Like, we're getting to understand each other more. I understand her cues. I feel like I know what she wants, whereas in the beginning it was just like, Wah! I don't know. It's a lot to adjust to. Clinton has just been amazing. He's a great dad and he's so supportive of me and all of my feelings and emotions. <laughs> but then at the same time, I've got this beautiful little baby that I am just so proud of 
and watching Clinton with her as well just melts my heart. Like he is also so proud of her. I'm proud of myself for giving birth. I know that Clinton is proud of me. Like there's just all these amazing things and as hard and as challenging as it is navigating this new life, it is just so rewarding, especially now that she's smiling. It's like, oh my God, <laughs> you love me, like, and you're responding to me. It's like, oh my God, it makes me cry. Seeing her little smiles in the morning, it's just so rewarding and <sighs> it's hard, but it's beautiful. Well, that is all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching and for asking questions. And also just thank you for all your support. Like you guys have been nothing but loving and caring during my entire pregnancy. You've all been so understanding. Like every time I've been honest, which I know does come across like, like it can come across as negative because I did find a lot of my pregnancy you know, quite difficult, but you were all so understanding and just reassuring and didn't judge me. And I really appreciate that. So thank you all so much. If you have any other questions, just leave me a comment and I'll get back to you. I will link my birth story and my vlogs down below if you haven't seen them. And hopefully I can get around to filming a makeup video soon, but don't hold your breath. <laughs> I do miss playing with makeup though. And I'm seeing all these new releases and I'm like, oh my God, I want to try that. I want to try that. But anyway, goodbye from little Miss Amelia and I. I used to do my bump updates at the end of every video, so here's the final one. What do you guys think? Is her hair gonna be red like mine? It is getting lighter and it's got a bit of a tinge in the sun, but I don't know, it still looks a bit brown. <laughs> Look at that. Bye!